Good afternoon, this is Jake, and welcome to my living room, where I'll be reviewing the Code 49 today. Um, we're in my little studio, and in an upcoming video I will show you my studio, or my living room. But I haven't gotten everything fixed yet, since I moved just a month or two ago, so I will show you later. Anyway, today I'm reviewing and going through the M-Audio Code 49. I have it sitting here. Uh, and I've had it for a full year, a little bit more actually, since January 2017, and now it's March 2018. Uh, I use it mostly as a controller, and uh, but I have used it in gigs as well, uh, theater gigs mostly actually. First off, I'm gonna start out with the background, a little bit of background with myself, so you know where I'm coming from. Uh, I work as a musician, full-time, I play the piano, uh, and I sing a lot in different types of gigs. I play in church, I play in uh, retirement homes, I play in uh, bars, restaurants, hotels, weddings, uh, private parties, I play in bands, I, I accompany people. Uh, I, I play so many places and I've played the last year more than 160 gigs. So I'm working really as full time as a musician, which is great, of course. So. I can play the piano. There was a number of years I studied it, and of course I played classical music before that, and yeah, you know. Okay, let's start out with the build quality. Uh, I have to say that the M-Audio Code 49, which is mine, is a bit plastic. It feels a bit plastic, unfortunately. If you have a cross stand, and you're playing in gigs, or playing at home or anywhere, you will feel this. It's like the keys and the key bed is bending. So they're not straight. It's like bending down when you're pressing on hard. And sometimes you do that when you play the piano. It's like you play harder, and you, especially when you, you play focused and you play on, on one octave or something, you play both hands in one octave. Of course, that's a problem then if the keyboard starts moving. You don't like that. It feels a bit plastic, doesn't it? It feels like, like you're not playing an instrument, like you're playing a little bit of a toy. And I do not like that feeling at all, especially since I played so much on real pianos and I'm a little bit new, it still feels like to non-weighted keys. It becomes a little bit of a problem. I made a list of four pros and four cons. And I'm gonna start out with the pros. So the first one is the looks. I have to say this is such a beautiful keyboard. It looks amazing. And the lights are absolutely fantastic. The drum pads have background lit uh, pads, which looks amazing, especially when it's dark. So if you close down all the lights and all you have is the light from your computer screen and maybe some small background light and this keyboard, it looks so good. It's ridiculous, actually. It becomes such an inspiring environment to work in. And I have it in white and I would really recommend white. It looks absolutely terrific. Number two all-round solution. This keyboard has it all. I have never lacked anything because of it. Uh, it has the drum pads, it has the, the keys, and I have the 49 keys, which as for a controller, you that's mostly what you need. Uh, it has like multiple knobs and faders. Uh, you can, for example, assign the faders. It has nine faders, so it, you can assign it to an organ, for example. Uh, it even has this little XY controller pad which is uh, really useful sometimes, <laughs> but most of the time not. It also has aftertouch and everything, so I think it has more or less everything you need, which is really nice, especially, especially for this price. Which leads me to number three. Number three is the price. This is quite a cheap keyboard. I think it comes in about 220 euros or something, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less. And for that price, I don't think there's anything that has this all-round solution that matches it yet. Number four, drum pads. Maybe you noticed I put the drum pads here and up here, both on the pros and cons. So we'll start out with the pros then. I never had drum pads before. When I got the drum pads, I really noticed, actually, now I can get into the rhythm. It feels like the keyboard is working with me, or rather the drum pads. And then I started noticing more things. It was like, oh yeah, I can actually start I can start mixing up a little bit with the rhythm and playing around with it. I can maybe put down the snare a little bit later and I can put the hi-hats on a little bit more shuffle just when I'm playing. 
it feels like actually the drum pads are working with you and not against you. And that is very important when you have a controller or any type of keyboard. It's like you want your instrument to work with you and not be in the way of you. And the drum pads, they're not in the way. Okay, let's go to the cons. Number one, that's also the drum pads. I don't know if this is in every keyboard, but every now and then when you play and you touch one drum pad, you actually play two. It's like the one above it starts playing as well, but really, really, really slightly. And that's usually when you play really hard, but sometimes you do that when you get into the rhythm, you really want to emphasize something. And that's a problem, that's a real problem actually. So, especially if you're playing live, I would guess, or if you're using them as a trigger or whatever. It's not as much of a problem when you can edit it out in the studio, but maybe it's only in my keyboard, but I don't like that at all. Number two, the wheels, the faders, and the knobs. When you, when you, for example, with the pitch shift, when you bend it down, it starts out here at 64. But if you go slowly downwards, you see it jumps almost 10 steps. That's actually noticeable in the music when you play it. Maybe if it were like four or five, yeah, sure, but... <laughs> It shouldn't jump at all, and that's like a sign of bad quality, actually. The faders have the same problem. You have to actually push them up a little bit before they start fading, and then they jump as well. So they go from somewhere, and they jump up like maybe 15 to 20 steps sometimes, and sometimes they jump up a little bit less, but it should be better. The knobs. Unfortunately, they feel very plastic. They don't really respond well, for example, when you assign a filter to them. Especially if you played a lot of real pianos that has faders. They feel really responsive usually, but this one doesn't. And it's bad quality, I would say. Number three, the keys. I put it actually in the cons, because I'm very picky about keys. I, played, I play real piano. I don't like it usually when the keys aren't perfectly responsive. These aren't, unfortunately. Sometimes if they feel a bit jumpy, like you can play really softly and then you start increasing the volume and then BAM! It's like full volume from nowhere. That, that doesn't really feel that great. They aren't perfect, but I guess at this price you wouldn't expect them to be perfect either. So I put them in the con category. Number four, it's the integration. I'm a pretty tech-savvy guy and I know how to work around things, but... I've had so many problems when switching DOS, for example. I've been working the main stage and I've been working Logic and, and then been working mostly in Ableton. It's actually quite annoying to integrate it. I had really big problems with uh, main stage when I was playing live. That the knobs and everything, they were assigned to things and mapped to things beforehand. And I had no idea why, so I, I had to spend like two hours just looking it up. And that was like, why? Why should I have to do that? The problems I've had. For example, these are small problems, but on my key of G, it makes a small noise. It's uh, not really nice, but it's only of the key of G here. Also, I had problems with the power supply. Uh, when I bought this thing, I just plugged it in and got the power through the USB from the computer. But throughout the first half year it started like deactivating and activating and I had no idea why and it turned out that it didn't get enough power from the USB 3 or something it didn't integrate well with that either that was a big problem so I had to buy a power supply for it which wasn't really nice but it's 25 euro additional but it's not about the price it's really about when you buy something you want it to work easily and you don't want to have these kind of problems. And last is the conclusion. Uh, would I buy this keyboard again? I probably wouldn't. But I probably wouldn't buy anything in this category either. I didn't realize it, that I should have gone up a level in price range. So you get a better quality one. But if you only have, for example, less than 300 euro to spend on something like this. Well, then maybe it's actually a good idea to buy this. Because you got everything in it. The all-round solution is like, you've got everything and you won't need anything else than this, for a controller at least, which is really great. For professional gigs or any type of gigs that you do regularly, no. 
go up. Like, you will be happy you did that. As it usually is with quality, like, buy quality and you get... It lasts and you will feel great playing it. Thanks a lot for watching this review and uh, let me know what you think about it as well. Uh, I will be putting up 52 videos this year. It's my New Year's resolution, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I think I will make it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later in the next video.